Greetings, Nick Bocott with Sweetwater here, and welcome to Making Metal Happy. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, exactly as the subheading implies, we're going to take moody, menacing minor riffs and make them happy and jolly by converting them into a major key. So, to give you an example of this crime I mean process, let's check this out. That was two pivotal riffs from Metallica's classic Enter Sandman, and I took them from minor and menacing to major and happy. Amusing or annoying? Your call, but let's quickly explain how I did that. To be honest with you, as opposed to lying, the vast majority of metal riffs I love are in minor, not major keys. Simply put, major is happy and jolly, minor is mean and moody. Here's what I mean. Here's A major. Yay! Here's A minor. That's more like it. Menacing. Now here's the note difference between a major scale and a minor scale. And we're going to do it in A, and I'm going to start with A natural minor, which is the key I use all the time and a lot of metal bands do. And it's great because it's all the white notes on the piano. So it just goes A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and then back to A. So this is what it sounds like. Moody. Now let's check out A major, and only three notes change. The first, the second, the fourth, and fifth stay the same, and so does the octave. But the third, the sixth, and the seventh change. They go a semitone higher. So this is what A major sounds like. <laughs> So this time, instead of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, then back to A, we went A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, then back to A. So three notes change, and they go a semitone higher, which is a fret higher on the same string. Got me? Now, because the major scale is, wait for it, considered major, the notes are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 8, which is the octave. So when we go to minor, the third is called the flattened third, the sixth is called the flattened sixth, and the seventh is called the flattened seventh because they're a semitone lower than the majors, which are just major. So just to sum up, the difference between the major scale and the natural minor scale is just three notes. To illustrate just how major just changing one note can be, I'm going to play you a classic metal riff in E minor, but to do that, I need to change guitars. Guitar change done, here is the riff in question. I'm sure you recognize it. Yep, that was Led Zeppelin's classic E minor riff, Whole Lot of Love. And it's really just three notes. The root, which is E, the fifth, which is B, the minor seventh, which is D. So to transfer it from minor to major, I just have to change one note, which is a D up to D sharp, which is one fret higher on the A string. So the E and the B remain the same. Let's hear the major difference such a minor change can make, awful pun intended. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I much preferred the first one. Just half a step makes all the difference, and sometimes that difference is not good. Here's another example of a classic metal riff in E minor, where the only difference between major and minor is the fact it uses a D, which is the minor seventh again. So let's listen to it, and then we'll change the D to the major seventh, which is the D sharp, and see how the riff transforms. <laughs> 
Right, now I've got the right guitar for the riff. Let's check it out. I'm sure you'll recognize it. Yep, that was, of course, Paranoid, one of Tony Iommi's many Black Sabbath classics. Now, the notes in it are E, A, B, D, and octave E. And all of them, apart from one, exist in both the natural minor and the major scale. Once again... The guilty party is the D, which is the minor seven. So to make paranoid major, we just have to move D up a half step to D sharp. Now let's check out what drastic effect that simple move has. <laughs> I think the technical term for that is yikes! Wow, what a major change, pun intended. Anyway, enough talking. Now we've seen how major those changes are when you go from minor to major. Once again, awful pun, I apologize. Let's just listen to some stuff and see how things get changed when we change those three notes. <laughs> Now, as you're probably aware, just like Enter Sandman, Cowboys from Hell contains the flat fifth, which is the blues note from the minor blues scale. And that's an evil sounding note, so we can't have it in a happy version. So what I did in both cases is move it to the fifth or down to the fourth for the second time it appears in Cowboys. Now, this next riff contains a note we haven't discussed yet, a flat second. And if you look on the Googles, that is indeed a minor second interval. So what we're going to do with this particular riff is when I majorize it, I'm going to raise the second and the third notes because it contains a flat third as well. So we're going to go from E, F, and G to E, F sharp, and G sharp. You'll know the riff, and I've got to warn you, when it goes to major, it ain't pretty. So brace yourself. <laughs> Like I told you, great riff made ugly, but not in a good way. Now, our final two examples contain the third, the sixth, and the seventh. So when I majorize them, we're going to raise three notes up a half step. Let's check them out.
that was painful. Breaking the law, yeah, I think I just did. Here's the last one, and it could be even uglier. A crime about to be committed. Conclusion, in my humble opinion, metal needs to remain minor, moody and mean. Like Kerry King from Slayer once said, smiles and Slayer don't go together, and I don't think smiles and metal do either. So to close, I'm going to play one more thing, which actually sounds kind of okay, sort of, kind of-ish, maybe not. This is what the Trooper by Iron Maiden, a true metal classic, would sound like if you majorized it. That said, I'm out of here. See you! Hey, thanks for putting up with me on that one. That was kind of painful. We definitely crossed that line between clever and stupid, in my opinion. But hey, it's just video, right? We're still rolling. Oh, really? Oh, if you're still watching, number one, ha, get a life. Number two, if you're interested in what I was using, you saw the guitars. The amp was the Katana Artist 1x12 100 watt combo. If you like this video, you can subscribe and see more. If you want to know more about gear, you can go to sweetwater.com. And if you'd like to, to cover something we haven't done yet, put it in the comments. And if you like this video, please post it. If you didn't, my name is Don Carr. See you.